you got canceled. That, how did that? How yeah, did they how cancel did that come you? About? Am I in a safe place? Safe yeah, place. You're in a safe, safe place. One hundred percent. It took a long time for me to start to start talking out about it. This is mm -hmm. the first week, literally. I mean, you guys have me when I'm just like, I'm here. I'm done. I'm not going back this way. I can't go back. All right, we're live. Another episode of Business Untitled. We are thrilled to have Drea DeMatteo from Queens, New York City. My mom's from Queens. I like people from Queens. We're going to hear her story. It's a story like a lot of our entrepreneurs. Lots of successes. She's been burned a few times. She's risen from the ashes like a phoenix. And so love to have you here. I've I've risen Welcome. from the from the asses <laughs> from the asses <laughs> from the asses. <laughs> it's true. So wait, true. before we jump in, I got one question for you. When you came here, did you have any clue who this guy was? I don't know who any of you are. <laughs> so I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, we I are. am walking, but you okay. had no clue who Mike Novogratz is. I don't. I, I want. I want your honest hold, hold, hold. answer. I'm going to be honest with you. Zoe, <laughs> We're going to edit this out. <laughs> Zoe said to me, "My friend has a podcast. I think you guys would hit it off." I never looked up the podcast. I never watched anything. So I you're, trusted you're, you're her. You're the kind of deep research and, person. No, you I didn't, am. You didn't just no, walk I in. usually am. I you didn't do just all walk in research. and was like, "Oh wow, that's Mike Novogratz." Even when no. he introduced <laughs> himself and said, "Hey, I'm Mike Novogratz." Well, what are you supposed to do? No and, fucking clue. No, no, no okay. perfect. <laughs> I, that's, that's, oh, that's the answer he was looking for. Was Shout looking out for. to Zoe Casavetes, <laughs> who's a dear friend, good friend of yours, and uh, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Did I fuck up? He's mad no, at me. No, he doesn't no, no. He's mad at me. He's, he's like, a little sad. I love you already. You're he, from Queens. He, he thinks he's famous. I don't know. What, but you know what? I, some, I don't even think I'm famous. <laughs> yeah, more famous than him. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers to your fame. See your freaking diet coke over there. All right, Mike. Queens. All right, so a little bit about our podcast. Okay. Uh, we became friends with Mel, I don't know, eight years, six years ago, seven years ago. And uh, we all started traveling together. And Mel finally said to us, he said, you know, people in my community don't get this kind of education. And we were like, what, education? of You know, two knuckleheads. But it was business education. It was introductions to communities uh, to networks and so we thought we'd put a podcast together with a guy that grew up in the hood a guy that grew up in middle class and a guy that grew up relatively rich uh <laughs> from three different businesses and interview entrepreneurs people that have had grit to kind of go forward screw up go forward again and make it uh and hopefully those stories inspire our audience uh our audience are mostly uh young young entrepreneur wannabes uh, a lot from underserved communities. And so that's the thesis and the idea. We've been having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I like it. I yeah. like it. I'm like a combination of the three of you. <laughs> you know, I'm from the hood. or at least I black. think, huh? I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> I like that. I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> um, and I grew up like middle class, you know, from Queens. But then my parents also had, to, had a lot of money but they would spend it so fast that we would end up middle class <laughs> by the time they spent it all. It must have been fun. And then I ended up poor in the <laughs> end after everything was said and done. When every time I I I, I self destruct, you know, in my industry and with this government. Do you, think, do you think you learned that from your parents? Honestly, is it not, you know like if they were kind of boom busters and you became a bit of a boom buster? Yeah, and I think I was just like, there's no bank in hell, so I may as well just share my money and spend it with. Spend it on everybody. I'm not an entrepreneur. I don't know why the hell. You guys must just like The Sopranos a lot. Love the Sopranos. Because, of course we love The Sopranos. You know, and I anybody who survives as an actress or an actor, I guess we call actresses actors these days. Listen, I'm going to call you an actress. I always called myself an actor until The Woke Brigade came out. and Because I was woke before there was woke. And then when woke really became a thing, I was like, no, I'm fucking awake. I'm an actress. Don't ever call me an actor again. <laughs> but so. anyone who survives and thrives as an actress... Uh, is an entrepreneur because you're kind of a self-made person. You got some people helping you out. You're you're trying to figure out how to take this talent that you've got and turn it into something. And so yeah, it yeah. sucks. And you're doing the podcast. You're doing so many different things. I that's how I look at it. Like, tell, tell us the chapter one. You, you 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 grow up in Queens. How do you become an actress? Man, I, I mean, my mom was a playwright. So I mean, she she grew up in the mafia. 
um, mafia dad. Yeah, her dad was a made guy, Joe Babes. Wow. You can you can look him up. He they say Joe Babes because he was a womanizer. And then I when I find when Google was a thing, I was like, oh, it's because he accidentally shot a baby. Wow. So there's that. <laughs> so. <laughs> She, I like the womanizer story a little bit. I know. Than the child murder story. I think it was but. both, but I don't. I don't know which is true. Actually, I don't even know if that story is true. That's just some online shit because he died in the. He died when he was fifty years old, so that's a long time ago. Um, but my mom, yeah, my dad was a furniture manufacturer, which I didn't know. He was fully connected to the mob. Also, his father was a was a don. They called him the Dunny. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, when I was on The Sopranos, I really didn't know. I didn't really know a lot of this. I mean, I knew about my, I knew about Joe Babes. I knew about the Dunny. I didn't know that my dad ha had borrowed money from Shylocks, and I didn't know that they were after him. I learned a lot of this stuff later. I don't know if you guys ever watch Michael Franzis. You ever hear of what his podcast? Um, he was the the um, the yuppie don who cheated the government out of all of the tax money on on gasoline. Mm -hmm. So oh, he wow. paid all, he was paying all the fam. He was a, he's a, an interesting cat for you guys to interview at uh -huh. some point. I mean, he <laughs> did time that. and then he came out. It's a, that's a phoenix huh. rising from the ashes. And then he became born again. Mm -hmm. And But he's not, you know, pontificating <laughs> about all that sort of stuff, but he's a motivational speaker now and he, Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna t talk about him for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> about myself. We do a lot of criminal justice reform here. He was my first guest on the Gangster Goddess podcast. Uh -huh. Anyhow, back to me. Um, yeah, I found out that my dad that there was actually a hit on my dad by his father. I found wow. this out wow. like only recently, which I thought was so fucking crazy. But he was a self-made man. Um, he was a kid who grew up with no shoes. He had to wait for his brothers to come home to get a pair of shoes. <laughs> and so then when he made money, the reason why we would go from rich to middle class is because he had about fucking 200 pairs of shoes in the closet. <laughs> I mean, he was the most well-dressed man. He looked like a mafia boss. Mm -hmm. um, so I grew up in Queens and they didn't want me there. They wanted me to be in Manhattan. They didn't want me to grow up the way they were raised. They didn't want me to have that whole Italian, you know, they just get, they probably gave me too much freedom. I was a third child two older brothers and um their child as well yeah it's a by the time they have you they're <clears> sort of <throat> like all right i'm done you know we're done so i was raised by a nanny uh -huh. i wasn't even raised by my parents mm. really and uh she wanted me to be in the theater with her all the time because that was the only way to spend time with me mm -hmm. i fucking hated it <laughs> so i swore i'd never act and i swore i'd never be involved in the theater but I ended up going to film school to make movies for directing because to me it was like the anti-theater. It was the fuck you to my mom and her business because it, that whole business drove me nuts watching mm -hmm. adults acting and acting like teenagers on stage when I was like, I want to play house. I'm seven and I should play house right now. Mm -hmm. Why are these big assholes playing house? <laughs> so I went to NYU film school and I just kept, I was a fuck up. I was a total fuck up. I was partying too much. I was bartending all through college. I didn't really need to bartend, but I got so used to having, you know, $1,500 a night, you know, throwing it in my drawer. I was like, I need to have all this money. I need to have, my parents were a still paying for my life. good fucking bartending job. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. They accused me of stealing. <laughs> where was your, where was your uh, best gig? I worked what at a place block? called, well, I worked at, remember Flowers, uh, Metro CC? You guys, we're all the same age, kind of. Most You're younger. Flowers. Yeah. I'm older. Yeah, you're old. You're we're 59. Oh, you're you're a little older than me then. I'm I'm 52. Um, you look 25. You're tw you're 25. You look no. 25. Oh, you <laughs> stop no. now. How old are you? 39. Yeah, he's 39. He's, he's a baby. He's 38. He's yeah. a baby. You baby. Um, met uh, Morrissey. Did you guys ever go to Morrissey? That was my big gig. I mean, That's I where I made a lot of money. Uh -huh. It was huge. Yeah. And the, yeah. So that I made a lot of money those nights, but. Yeah, I fucked off and I, I didn't do well in college and I had to, eventually I had to drop out. They kicked me out. NYU mm -hmm. kicked me out. I did a lot of crazy shit to uh -huh. get kicked out. I, got kicked out. I wanted to get kicked out of the dorms. They didn't kick out. They just parents, asked you to leave uh -huh. for No, no, they bit. kicked my ass out. They <laughs> yeah. kicked me out of the dorms. I mean, this is not the... This is probably not the right podcast this for is these the right stories. This is the school dropout. The way I got out of the dorm was I, I said to my friend, just bring me a five-foot bong. Bring me the five-foot bong. 
uh-huh. and we'll get the fuck out of this dorm room <laughs> in five minutes. My parents will give me their apartment in five minutes flat. And that was it. He goes, well, should I wrap it in a sheet? I said, bring me the five foot bong. I want to get kicked out. Just walk past security with it. Uh-huh. We're going to invite the whole dorm to, to do bong hits <laughs> off my bed. We were out of there in 20 minutes. And um, I got to go back to the fancy then, apartment on 61st and 3rd. And then, and then you started acting? Yeah. From I, there? I, well, I started jumping in front of the camera to hand in my project because uh-huh. I never... I never had any actress to be in my films. And I was like, shit, I have this, this project to do. So now I'm my own subject because I have no actors and I'm continuously acting. And I think that I really wanted to act, but I was too embarrassed to ever say I wanted to do that because I thought that was so not boss. Mm-hmm. I thought it was so prissy. Yeah, it's easier to be discovered than to actually say, I want to be an actress. It wasn't even that. I just felt like it was demeaning, and I knew I'd live a life of continuous humiliation and rejection. <laughs> and uh, and I was so insecure, and I was so shy. I was painfully mm. shy, like mm. pain, pain, painfully shy, up until Sopranos, really. Tell us about that. When you when you got cast on that, or how did how did that come about? Did you know when you first got that script, or however it happened, like it was like this is amazing. I mean, you just told us about your mob connected background. Yeah. Did you did it hit you right off the get go that this Not was something? the mob stuff. No. It was the writing. Mm-hmm. Because my mom my mom's a play she taught playwriting. She was a big teacher at, mm. at at Herbert Berghoff Studios. She was his protege and she uh, Herbert Berghoff's protege. So he would direct all of her plays because her plays were that beautiful. Like mm-hmm. and never been published. I, I would like to publish them now. But um the writing, like her writing, and then seeing David Chase's writing and reading that pilot script. I remember reading it, and I and I was just reading for a... I, I, I mean, I wasn't even reading for the show. It mm-hmm. was just a day player. And I read it, and I called my mom. I go, wow, you have to read this fucking show. Wow. I was like, this is beyond anything I've ever seen wow. on television. And um, I was like, it'll never get made because this is a work of art. And she was like, wow, I would love to read it. And I sent it to her and she's like, this is untouchable. Uh huh. Because she'll sit there and correct everybody's script. And it was beautiful. And wow. the whole, you know, the whole, du- the pilot was, yeah. The pilot was pretty extraordinary. And they it didn't, was. they didn't try to make it something else, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. It was going on cable. They didn't care. Yeah. That's pretty amazing that from the minute you touched it, like the writing's that important, you know, that you can pick up on that and that. The first episode had like the ducks and the psychology yeah. and it just came from this really, you know, interesting place, right? I to think start so. off a mob show. I don't know that everybody picked up on it, but I think because I was so in tune with my mom's classes mm-hmm. and listening to her critique writers, I mean, I learned how to act that way too. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think I studied acting that much, but I listened to her critiquing the scripts and the writers and how those scripts needed to, and it's kind of like life. Like if you're not doing something Mm -hmm. and you're just stagnant, then the script's going to suck. Your life's going to, it's the same thing. You know, the story's going to suck. The acting's going to suck. When you, when you got on that show, right, you were not one of the main characters, right? Do you, did you know you were going to be that main character or did you kind of grow into that? Right. Cause you started off just like, like in a bar, right. As a, can you like as a hostess or something? And then before you knew it, you're one of the main, so how did that feel? How did you, did you like channel that? She started out, right? Like, yeah, I remember that, but I, I don't know much about shows. So I thought that was the whole script to begin with. No, she, uh, when I read for that, they didn't, it was a cold reading. So you don't know what the project is. There's no dot, there's no Uh. script or anything. But I don't think they needed, it didn't matter. It wasn't like it was confidential or anything. I think just, it was a, it's cable. Like, mm-hmm. give us a shit. Like, no yeah. one was excited. No one's excited about this. I mean, mm-hmm. what was on? Dream On, um, which was great. The Gary Shandling, Larry yeah. Sanders. That yeah. was great. Yeah. Oz was my favorite Oz. show. I was just, yeah. Oz was Oz on was at the first, same time, man. right? And yeah. no one gives Fontana, is it Fontana? Props for that. Because that show, man. That show I is fucking amazing. So good. I mean, so, but it, I mean, remember out of BC? Huh? Out of BC? Out of BC's little fucking hat. <laughs> he had Come that on. hat on. Yes. <laughs> but he wore it like this is a Bill's little... hat. <laughs> he left at the last podcast. Out of I stole BC, it. I haven't heard that in forever. 
Oh my god, it was so good. Did you guys watch Oz? Ever seen it? No. It's worth I've watching. Seen, they were yeah. too rich for Oz. Some men can't watch it. Uh huh. Some men find it all too disturbing. Mm. I think it's actually yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. Have you the seen Mike? Watch it. Mike, you seen it? No. No. You couldn't make a show like that today. Yeah. Oh hell no! You couldn't make The Sopranos. Could, yeah, today. you couldn't make The Sopranos. Today, you couldn't make Sex and the, the City today. You couldn't make The Sopranos today. Think. No. Yeah, you can. No. Maybe not Oz. Mm -mm. You can't make the Sopranos. No, you can't. You can't. You can't make the it's so not politically really? correct. Instantly goes into racist things like, wow. like really quick, right? Like big in, time. Uh, big time in early big time. pieces of it. Yeah, yeah. That, that they yeah. would get canceled. How did today. the world get so soft? Everybody's a pussy Fuck. now. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> a fucking pussy. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna just sit here and cry for a little bit. <laughs> so let's stay on the Sopranos so, for a second yeah. before we uh, we yeah. really get into. Oh yeah, so a, the, the main character, that character I read for was, yeah. a, she was. Oh, I read for Christopher's girlfriend. I'm sorry, I read for his like date in the pilot. I, don't, I mean, he might have had a little girlfriend in the pilot. They said no, read for uh, the Russian mistress, and then he was like, no, I read for every single part. Cold hmm. read, and I left, and you know, no one gave a shit. So my agent called and she goes, he just likes you because you're Italian, but doesn't think that you're very Italian. Because I went in there looking like a clean slate. I didn't, they say, you know, when you go in and audition for something, just keep it, keep it simple. You don't know what you're reading for and just be a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know I was going in there to fucking talk like this and that and like, <laughs> oh, this shit. Otherwise I would have had that shit nailed. Um, so he hired me anyway. He goes, would you play the, well, the hostess in the restaurant? That turns Lorraine Bracco down. I'm like, you mean Karen? I'm going to turn Karen down from Goodfellas? Uh -huh. And I went and did it. It was a day player role. And I couldn't say my line because I was so nervous. No one wow. knew who Jim was. He wasn't, yeah. He, you know, no one knew who, J who James Gandolfini yeah. was. Yeah. It was just Lorraine Bracco. And I mm -hmm. couldn't say my line. But when they called me in for the series, they didn't know that I couldn't say that line. They called me in for the series. It was another day player read it wasn't anything it was playing his girlfriend in another day player role and i knew what the show was about but i remember they called me in queens i was visiting my parents and my grandma and they were like can you come and read for us and i go i'm in queens i said no i can't <laughs> what? and they go we're in queens and i was like fuck you. <laughs> i was like all right they're like how fast can you be here we need somebody to come in and read right now and I was like, Jesus Christ. And I said to my mom, this is that show that I told you about with the ducks and the thing mm -hmm. and the, oh my God. She goes, hold on. I'm getting your nameplate out in diamonds from the safe. My name's Andrea, my full mm -hmm. name, like Adriana. They must have seen that Andrea, uh -huh. maybe on a rope chain, you know? And my mother goes, when you say Al, because that was my only line, Al. She goes, you make that shit nine syllables like your neighbor my friend Silvana mm -hmm. and I went ow and that was it they said that's that I got <laughs> that I got the fucking part on ow uh -huh. I milk I was like ow nailed it nailed it <laughs> you know shout out to your mom shout out to my mom she totally understood the world I remember we were eating chicken cutlets my grandma was making chicken cutlets and she's like I'll make heroes so she made chicken cutlet parm heroes and then we went to silver cup and we my parents sat outside I went in and I got that part, but it was still a day player part. There mm -hmm. was no real role. They had, if they were casting that part for real, it would have been Debbie Mazar, Mira Sorvino, M maybe Marissa Tomei, the girls mm -hmm. that do that really well. Mm -hmm. So David loved me. He did. And mm -hmm. it was like, we, it was, it, do you remember? Oh, I was looking at Robbie over there now. Sorry. <laughs> I was just with David in uh -huh. LA. It was the 25th anniversary of the show right now. Wow. And um, he was doing a panel, and it was all these subscribers of the show, of the, of the Egyptian theater. And they asked me if I wanted to come. The audience didn't know I was going. I was just there to support David and Terry Winter, who's one of the writers who did Boardwalk Empire, and um, Matt Another Weiner, who did Legendary Mad Men. show. I haven't really seen it. Really? You I've have to. I've seen parts of it. I think I was burned because HBO was shepherding out my show that my mom wrote. Yeah. And they ended up giving it back to me and doing Boardwalk Empire because, yeah. I mean, Scorsese put a stamp on it and it was Terry Winter. So, of course, they're going to do Boardwalk. But my show was a more personal show about a family in Harlem. And that was my family. And it's a true story. Um, so I was, a I was like, yeah, you know, I don't need to watch that one. But then I heard later on that... 
it was it was such a big scale show that they were bummed out that they didn't stick with the small family vibe also at the time mm -hmm. because wow. our show had diff had a different dynamic. Right. How fast did the cast become friends or did you guys become friends? Like we've all On met Sopranos. a bunch of them over time, you know. You have? Uh, yeah, yeah, just randomly, Michael uh, uh -huh. you know from the Jazz Foundation and uh, who went to Poly? What Gandafini went to his kids went to Village Community School. I know, but the the big guy. Oh, his? my son went there. He gave Is the best. Right? He gave uh, my kids went there. How, why can't I think of his name? He gave the best commencement address for one of my kids' commencements. Uh, the big guy, uh, Sharipa. Sharipa. He gave a great commencement address. It was hysterical. Where uh, your college? At Poly Prep High School. For my kids, my kids went to oh, Poly Prep. Oh, All the mob kids. kids used to go to Poly Prep High School. For, oh for God, real. That's so funny. Uh, like for real, for real, for real not real Soprano kids. kids. Yeah. They, yeah, the real, the real right. mob kids, and they still go. Is Sharip a real mob? No, but he 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 played, I mean, I he plays it. He played the role <laughs> yeah. pretty well. I don't know. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Some he, of them He gave you a great know. story about being in Las Vegas and you know yeah. how he got the role. Uh, Anyway. So you got the big role. But so were they friends? Were they, were, was it a, were you guys friends or was it yes. just you showed that up? That show was, and so David and I were reminiscing about all this stuff last week. Um, it was, I mean, like, for example, now Jamie and Robert Eiler, they really are brother and sister. Yeah. That, that's a bond that, they'll, that will never stop. He actually moved to Austin to be with her to do their podcast. Their podcast is huge and amazing. Uh -huh. Um, I forgot oh. the name of it. They changed the name of it. It used to be pajama oh. pajama pants. Um, but we all, we were, I mean, the men were always doing signings, big autograph signings, and I was always a part of that. So mm -hmm. I was always with them doing the signings. All the women weren't always together. Um, but there was like this deep camaraderie because the show was so new. It, we, none of us knew what hit us. Did, did you know from, when did it take you, how long did it take you guys to understand The Sopranos was like enormous, like huge? You know, was it that pilot? Was it the first season? Is there a point in time when you look at it and you're like, oh, wow, this yeah, is going to like, be. What was your first moment where you was like, holy shit, I'm a fucking star? Like That's that funny. first was, moment somebody ran, screaming. Ah! crying or just that moment it really really hit you i think when they start i didn't like doing press or events like i didn't like going to the awards it really freaked me out like all the red carpet shit but i had to go otherwise david would have been pissed and um when we would get to the airport that was intense the wow. amount of people waiting at the airport and the fact that we couldn't walk through, that we would have to be escorted on a golf cart to get us quickly through everything, away from everybody. That was nuts. That was, <laughs> you know. That's the first time it really hit you. I think in my little mind, yeah, that was early on uh -huh. in the show. But they didn't like us. You know, Hollywood didn't like us. The critics didn't like us. Um, the academies didn't like us. Was it because you were threatening? Like I'm saying, like in t coming from HBO and streaming, it was threatening the big Hollywood. I think machine. there wasn't enough glamour for them. Uh -huh. I think they felt like we really were those characters, and mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys did a pretty good uh -huh. job. Playing. We acted like we were. I like, mean, you kind of were. I didn't want to do press ever because I didn't want anyone to know that I didn't talk like this. I uh -huh. wanted everybody to know that this to think that this because I was serious about my fucking performance. I was not fucking around. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be any different from that. I figured everyone told me to change my my last name, that being an Italian was a terrible thing in, in our industry back in those days. That was a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, Demateo is like a fucking four letter word. Uh -huh. And they try to change my name so many times. You're going to be stereotyped. You're going to be stereotyped. And I figured, fuck it, now I'm doing it, I'm leaning into it. Mm -hmm. And I don't want anybody to know that I'm not this character. Um, David Chase at this Egyptian theater the other night, they asked him that same question. They said, uh, so when did you realize that this show was, was you know, a hit? Mm -hmm. And he looked up behind him at the big 25 on the big screen at the Egyptian and the whole 3,000 or how many people were in the audience. And he said, right now. And that's wow. true. He did never, I don't think he ever recognized wow. the impact of that show. I think, you know, you hear it over and over again. Um, I mean, even in the, in the lockdown, I was like, 
what's something else is going? And then when I left the house for the first time after the lockdown, I mean, I get recognized a lot because I don't I haven't changed. Mm-hmm. I still look the same. And maybe from all the years of partying, who knows? I'm like <laughs> fucking pickled. <laughs> you know? <It's> like, <laughs> I mean, I haven't done anything to my face yet. Uh-huh. But um but when I walked out of the house after the lockdown, it was a whole new crew. Mm-hmm. Wow. It was a new world. It was kids in their twenties. Oh yeah, because everyone watched what right. they watch, right? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So, it just never stops. Mm-hmm. The show literally fucking never yeah. stops for us. It was the 20th anniversary. Now it's the 25th. Right. I mean, it's just going to keep perpetuating. And now the critics love it. Mm-hmm. But they didn't like us back then. We showed up to the Emmys the first year. David knew they couldn't stand us. Mm-hmm. Um, we showed up in a New Jersey transit bus. Uh-huh. No limos. A fucking New Jersey transit bus. And we all piled out. Uh-huh. They were not amused. Uh-huh. That's funny. No one's trying to grab shots. It was just under the radar. Mm-hmm. They were like, fuck these people. Yeah. Mel, ask your question. And this is the life Mike wants really fucking <laughs> bad. <laughs> your question. Which question? About her getting... Her oh, oh that question. I was going <laughs> to get into the question. So... Oh. Mel's got to write his questions down before the podcast. <laughs> no, me I too. Was just gonna say the question. <laughs> I need to I write my answers down. Yeah. To go, <laughs> Let me no, ask well, the question. You know, you've got to write his note cards. Sopranos. So okay, you have to let's get Mel's note cards. My, my <laughs> question. Uh, I have many questions, but one of the questions <laughs> is: So the Sopranos is fucking the biggest thing in the world. Uh, swear jar. Swear jar. Uh, by the way. Oh, it's empty First of all, right she now. cursed 48 times. She does not. She, it doesn't apply right to guests. I okay, feel okay. In case you guys don't know, we Keep have a going. swear jar now. I feel really triggered by that. We put $20 in every time we curse. And it's going to go to That's a viewer. That's how you're entrepreneurs. It's yeah. going to go to a viewer. <laughs> and that viewer is going to show that they got the money. They're going to post it. And we're going to repost you guys on our fucking... <laughs> Yep. Keep going. Um, You'll get it later. Can I Venmo you guys? That's the question. That's another for question. all my <laughs> curses? <laughs> Where you get absolved. So, okay. so Plus, whatever that. Yeah, you're on The Sopranos, biggest show in the world. I think it was season five, right? And boom, they kill you off. Did you know that was coming? Oh yeah. And what? I, what did that feel like? Were you ready to die? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't think you're ever really ready to die. Um, okay, so I, want truth. I Were you never, mad? Were you? I went to David Chase and I said, I want to direct a movie. I, that's what I went to school for. I've never done it. I want to do it. I have a script that I love. Um, I want to know what you're doing with me. But you're really not supposed to ask the boss. Not David Chase, the boss. I mean, like the boss. Like he's the fucking boss. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, these questions. Because he doesn't like these questions. Wow. And But I thought he loved me so much that it would be okay. Because <laughs> I was like his baby, <sighs> I felt like, on the show. He never, in, you know, he never wrote me into, he, it was never, I was never intended to be there. I wasn't in the first season. I was. I became a series regular later mm-hmm. by, by that. I think ep, the, a hit is a hit episode. Um, so anyway, he sits me down. I'll never forget. It was during season five while we were see- while we were filming it. I, I sat. He sat me down on a curb on the floor. I don't know where we were, but I think I had the neck brace on. And yeah, I was about to do this really emotional scene, and I don't remember what scene it was, but I feel like I had the neck brace on. And we were shooting in a house to double as the hospital, maybe, or something. Maybe it was in the hospital. I'm all banged up. Maybe we were going to Dover to get an eight ball. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what was happening. I don't know <laughs> if you guys really know the show that well. <laughs> But David reminded me of it last last week. He sat me down and he goes, all right, I'm going to shoot it two ways. I'm going to shoot this where you survive, and I'm going to shoot it where you get away. And no one's going to know how it ends until it airs because we have confidentiality problems on set. And that was true because now I think the confidentiality problem is the guy that just wrote that fucking book that's smearing Jim's name all over wow. town who were all furious about it because Jim was like a fully whole human being and now this guy's writing some sensational bullshit book mm-hmm. just to make money on the anniversary. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he might have been the rat, that guy. And so we shot it two ways. And I wasn't, no one was supposed to know how it ended but I had already been offered another job. 
and I knew in the in my in the back of my mind that I was out. And wow. I was ready. I had to convince myself I was ready. Season five was supposed to be the end. Yeah. That was the, and he said it about five times at this panel the other night. And just hearing him say it over and over again, it made me feel good for the kid who was 30 or 29 that was about to leave the show. Because yes, I was heartbroken, but I was also really done with that character arc mm -hmm. because I couldn't take it anymore. I was so invested in it. And I was such a serious actor. Not that I'm not a serious actor now, but at this age, you're not gonna kill yourself over your art. And in those days, I might have. I really tortured myself to get the, to do those scenes. Um, I was done with that. I was ready to go do comedy. Mm -hmm. Anywhere you wanted to put a hit on him? No, no. <laughs> I loved him so much. He gave me my life. He, I feel like he birthed me. Like I was such a shy kid. I would have never had the confidence to do anything else. Mm -hmm. I remember he gave me a gift of a, a compact. And I, I remember looking at the compact and I wrote him a thank you note. And the thank you note was somewhere along the lines of like, I can now look in this mirror and fix myself up when I'm about to go in and audition for another role. And if these motherfuckers don't want me, it means nothing mm -hmm. because you had me and I trust you implicitly and it means I'm in the wrong place. So well, shout out to him. Yeah, David Chase is he's incredible. Mm -hmm. He's just it's just a whole different breed of of writer. There's very few like him, you know, out there, I think. So and especially because I'm Italian and that whole Italian thing. I mean, it was just done so it was really done beautifully and funny. Fucking funny. He was mm -hmm. so funny while he was being sad and mm -hmm. all that stuff. But um yeah, right, and oh, oh, so I went and I took Joey. I took the NBC show, and that was, uh, he was upset because it got out in the news, and that was mm. bad. And now everyone knows what's happened to, what's going to happen to Adriana. Mm. So now the confidentiality is leaked, oh, wow. and it's by the press. So I had to do damage control, and I, ha and I had to go on talk shows, which I don't like to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, now all I do is fucking talk, but um, <laughs> I'm just trying to... You're a good talker. I'm just trying to talk my way. I don't know. It's, I, I just don't want to act anymore, uh -huh. you know? But, um, yeah, it, he, I had to go on all the talk shows and say, no, I'm not dying. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I didn't take a Friends spinoff. What are you guys, crazy? I was like, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> And, and and just kind of like, okay, so Joey and then... They convinced me to what? do it. I didn't want to do it. Uh -huh. My How father, did Joey do? I can't yeah, remember. I it know. actually did great. Oh, really? But everyone thinks it was a big failure, but it mm. was actually a huge triumph if you would have looked at numbers compared to what they are today and then. I mean, we were still at 14 million viewers. Wow. But Friends was 17, so that didn't cut it. Mm -hmm. And That's Sopranos was, wow. was like, I don't know, maybe 12 to 13, but that was cable and paid. Mm -hmm. Um these days, every you know, well, we had a strike for it. No one, no one gets anything. It's mm -hmm. Streamers, but you don't really know. But it was doing really well. But we weren't happy. Do you guys still get paid on residuals from Sopranos every time it? Uh, shows? I don't know why I'm on an entrepreneur show. I mean, you 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 signed the wrong contract. I'm like on a corner with a fucking coffee cup like this. And <laughs> Autographs for a dollar. <laughs> well, we're gonna, we're, we're going to get to that. <laughs> someone pay me when I say fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, no residuals. Yeah. That's a big deal it's that big we deal. didn't get residuals. Yeah, yeah, it was a really big deal. Now I heard a fucking doll is coming out that I have a, a Funko Pop coming out. I don't get anything That's wow. crazy. from any of that, and I still can't walk down the fucking street in peace. So I'm like. And I don't mind. I love it. I love the fans. But there's always this little part of me that's like, man, I wish I just would have. Yeah, you, you know. wonder, like, the. We talk about this a lot, like ethical business and non ethical business. And it wouldn't take a lot for them to share the IP, some portion of it, Something. with the people that do it. And nothing. And I see nothing. People are just greedy panels. as fuck. They take advantage of it until they can't. Yeah. Uh, and that, I don't and like that. And that's disappointing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm yeah. quiet about it. Like, I'm not a real. I know I talk oh, I a lot and whatever, bucks. and I know I'm... Yeah. Are you really... You're paying in? I just said greedy ass. Oh, no. You guys need... You're going to have to charge we're, we're, me to be here. <laughs> I can't do that to your viewers. I only, I only <gasps> oh, you just paid for Because he's so mine. rich. I'm going to get changed. I'm going to get changed. You paid for mine. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no. Fuck, 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 I counted 40 <laughs> bucks. <laughs> so, so, 
after that, like when when more recently when Hollywood, the Vax stuff, all you know, how how you did you feel about how, how did that how, yeah, did, how did that come you? about? Am I in a safe place? Safe yeah, place. you're in a safe, safe place, hundred percent. You guys are not going to hate me or judge me no. because I, I wasn't zero, compliant. Zero, we have zero. 300 million views. They may have something Z different to say. Zero. Yeah. I don't want to crash your people off on no, your listen, platform. It's a, it's, you don't want to be canceled. We had another me. Italian guy. He said, is this fucking real? It's real. Yeah. All right. Okay. You yeah, just yeah. paid for now it. tell us about it. <laughs> for real. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you. Listen, um, this is my coming out party this week. I have... Uh, so far, been on every Fox show. <laughs> Never thought that Fox. I would ever be <laughs> on any Fox show in my lifetime. I'm a uh -huh. self-proclaimed... Uh, I, I was never political. I've right. never been into politics. I lived in a literary bubble of, you know, just art and literature, and I hated artists who spoke out about politics. They've fucking bored me to pieces mm -hmm. um i don't mind the musicians a little bit because i was all about the whole hippie movement you know until i realized that maybe that was a whole fucking psyop in the last <laughs> couple <of> years. <laughs> um but i am still a hippie in the sense of what we still want to believe a hippie is you know and i think i i hung my hat on that mm -hmm. when it came to the vaccine um my kids are fully vaccinated I never wanted to vaccinate my kids, but my ex wanted me to, so I, I did it, and I did, it was easier to just say yes, and I figure everybody's doing it, and I'm not, and I guess I am. I was always a sheeple to a large degree, and um, I, I just, something was just tapping me on the shoulder, just saying, nope, mm -hmm. you can't do this. You can't do the kids can't do it. You can't do it. I took care of my nanny who raised me, and she had a heart transplant. And I they wanted all they really wanted to vaccinate her, and they really wanted all of us to be vaccinated to be around her because she was elderly. And they're like, they all, all the old people are dying. It was like, I swear to God, I it was like a God thing. And I'm not like a psycho religious person, you mm -hmm. know. I've always, even though I guess in, in a lot of ways. I, through that time, the only voice that I felt safe listening to because I couldn't find the truth anywhere mm -hmm. was listening to a lot of conservatives. And I felt more, I, I know this sounds so crazy. My friend, I was on a, on a text chain with an old friend of mine who used to always call me a, you know, a commie, mm -hmm. <laughs> all my libertarian friends. And he was, and he put me on a text thread with Tucker Carlson and he's like, maybe you'll feel better. You know, I think you guys, we all used to hang out in the same circles, Dre, but you wouldn't have fucking paid any attention to him because he was had a bow tie and short hair. And I was mm -hmm. like, you're probably right. Um, but that was like the only solace I could find. And I was like, wow, so this is where I'm at. Like I'm watching The Daily Wire and I'm listening to Tucker Carlson. And all of a sudden, I'm in a different... I'm like, what has happened to the world? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like my side of the world, even though I was never politically labeled as anything, because I never voted for mm -hmm. anybody. I didn't give a shit. I was anti-establishment. Mm -hmm. Period. I also felt like it was irresponsible for me to vote for anyone because I was uneducated about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to talk to me about, you know, smart? I'm right here. But mm -hmm. I didn't know. I felt like it would be irresponsible for me because I hadn't done any research mm -hmm. and I didn't know who was who and what was what until it knocks on your door and until you lose everything. And mm -hmm. I felt like I lost everything. What's so interesting, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, I read an article today that uh, I posted with all my conservative friends and it sent their hair on fire. And I wasn't trying to set their hair on fire. I was like, we've gotten to a place where either side really can't figure out, even if you're trying, what the truth is, Yeah. right? And so it's a shitty place to be. I mean, Tucker is a master at being 70% truthful and 20% full of shit. Um, well, he admits that from back in his day, but now I he think still, he's... He still is. I mean, he does, yeah. the Putin interview was just broad propaganda, but there's, part, there's a lot of truth to it, right? It's, <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, 
I mean, listen, I don't like the guy because he called me domestic terrorist. The next time I see him, I'm going to pound him. Who? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Tucker? Yeah. Oh, shit. You He's are famous, dude. Something. You are super famous. Hold <laughs> on. No, but, 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 no but, idea who but he I'm is, not, right? But I'm not saying... They, I'm dead. You're, I'm a dead person in this, in this interview but the, right no, now. No. But the, no, you're not. Listen, the, 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 left, the left is just... Don't worry. I got your the side. The left is just as bad, and so it's really hard to figure out the truth. You decided something resonated with you, and that was your truth. And I'm not. I'm not criticizing you at all for it. What's interesting is once the cost became, I mean, literally you're getting canceled by Hollywood. It's something where you've worked your ass off and, mm -hmm. you've, and you've become a fixture. Uh, there, th was there something in you that said, fuck them. I just want to, oh, shh, I, got another 20 bucks. <laughs> I just, I just want to fight uh, because you don't get to tell me what to do versus... Eh, like you used to do with your kids, your husband wants to do it, your ex-husband wants to do it, so you just do it anyway. It's not that big of a cost. No. Like what what created that willingness to really risk a ton and lose a ton just to to be right? When we, I, do, when we don't even know what right and wrong is. I did so much research and I never stopped. And the more yeah, but none of us are none of us. We all did so much but, research. But, we let, let her no, answer, but Mike. the more the, the more I the more I saw, the more I understood, the less I knew. And I still feel that way. <laughs> I, I feel, but once you see certain things, you also can't unsee those things. And even with Tucker, like, you know, everything that he was about, like I, I had a lot of people fight me when I would defend him on certain things, a lot of my liberal friends. And then I was like, but you don't even know the full person. There's no, you're, you don't, you haven't watched fucking thousands of hours of interviews. Like I have, you fucking cancel someone in California who can't act anymore and you chop off my fucking balls. Well, what else am I going to do? Mm -hmm. I want to know why. I really want to understand what's really going on. I also will rewind back to um, the whole Bush administration and how I felt about that, even though, I, like I said, I, I'm not in the politics thing. But me and my ex, Shooter Jennings at the time, um, he left the country music industry. He didn't leave the country music industry. I, he, he made a, a rock and roll concept album about the new world order. And it was the last night, the concept album is about the last night before martial law and Stephen King, we asked Stephen King to narrate the album. And he narrates, he would have never narrated it in this administration if it was about Biden. But he did. But it's the same administration. It's the same. It's the same um, issues. It's just a continuation with a different, different left, right, red, blue. It doesn't fucking matter. Like you said, um, it's it's invisible. There's no there's no groups here. There's no mm. political party. This is about what's behind those political parties, in my opinion, and how many people are going to be controlled and blackmailed and told that they need to follow a certain thing. So when this al when Shooter did this album, um, he's, he's DJing Stephen King from a pirated radio station um, on the night before the, the, the uh, what is it, the, the, the cops come in and shut him down and they kill him. It's a fucking amazing album. It's called Black Ribbons. And I directed a music video with him. I was like, I wanna do a video on this song. And it was called Summer of Rage. And if you go watch that music video, it's messed up. We did it really quickly because we had a film before we got in an airplane. So all the camera angles are messed up, but it's with my daughter. And mm. she is woken up by a TV telling her to wake up and her parents are gone. And she crawls out of her crib. She's this big. She crawls out of her crib, going into the be bedroom, mommy, daddy. And now that TV comes on. And it's like a big uh, stop sign that says, no, mommy and daddy aren't here anymore. I'm here to take care of you now. And now she gets in bed and she's just waiting and looking around. She goes downstairs and she plays with her toys. And she it's done. Her parents are gone. There's all this footage of the parents with the lights flashing. and So now this child's going to be raised by society. And the whole song's about uh, FEMA building mass graves. And you and I, they'll vaccinate. And it is nuts and to see that video now like when i was i i posted it in the middle of the lockdown because i was really moved by what was going on i was like we knew this was happening we knew this was coming i went back to sleep after shooter and 
did that album. Shooter and I then broke up years later. But that album was so prophetic. He'd probably kill me for even promoting it right now because I don't even know that he my bro- wants... My, bro- my brother's a huge Shooter Jennings fan. Um, I don't even know if he wants to be associated uh-huh. with it right now because, I don't. you know, he's yeah. working in the industry, man. Yeah. He's in it. Mm-hmm. And it was a work of art. It's not, you know, it's still art. And yep. people have to yep. know how to differentiate. Even with yeah. the Sopranos, they couldn't differentiate. Mm-hmm. The, the anti, you know, all the anti-Italian defamation guys, all that. But um, anyhow, no. Yeah. There was not even one moment where I thought, maybe I'll just comply. Right. There was not even one fucking right. moment. So, yeah, you be- she- I want to say, she, she, I'm going to just restate, like, she believed in it, right? You believed in it no matter what. Whether or not all the facts were there... Or not, it was like your set of beliefs. And I think what's interesting about it is <clears throat> during lockdown, we can have different set of beliefs about it, but the canceling is a different thing. No, that's it's what, one that's thing, what I'm getting, that's yeah, what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, it's one yeah. thing to say, hey, right now we believe in a lockdown, you can't come on the set. It's another thing to cancel her because of a belief. Yeah, we had, right? I don't think I was things. canceled, actually. They, I canceled or, myself. You did? I, okay. I just took myself out of the yeah. game. I didn't even want to be subject to it. I didn't want to fight. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I, I I know I talk a lot, but like, <laughs> I'm not the first person to be like, it took a long time for me to start, to start talking out about it. This is mm-hmm. the first week, literally. I mean, you guys have me when I'm just like, I'm here, I'm done. I'm not going back this way. I can't go back. Yeah. Um, the vaccine thing, it all it was was a hippie not wanting to take medicine. That mm-hmm. was it. Mm-hmm. I eat fucking flowers and herbs and I take all kinds of weird shit, you know? And I believe in that weird shit and it's gotten me by my entire life. I mean, not to say that I haven't taken antibiotics or things that I need and that medical, the, you know, I was, I didn't know what was going on. I was as scared as everybody. I was watching this thing unfold on television. I was believing everything I was seeing. But then when they decided that frontline workers were now the fucking enemy, the ones that didn't want to comply, and that when I started finding out about what they were doing in certain countries with people's bank accounts and what they were doing with the truckers in Canada and how they were using propaganda to color you know, the working man just standing up for their rights and trying to turn them into racists mm-hmm. and and just doing all of this really bizarre shit. Then I, I remembered, you know, the album. I remembered what that was about. Mm-hmm. And I realized that here we are. We're in the middle of it and it's here. And now tech, I think that wow. I feel like the unelected officials behind us have been working on this for a really long time and now technology is in a place where a lot of it can come together Mm -hmm. and this was the first well not the first but definitely a a big test for a lot of people so i guess you're not going to give the government your dna (laughs) they have my i'm sure they They all have have this is the crazy part like you know our privacy i'm in the cryptocurrency business and uh we talk a lot about privacy but the reality is we've given our privacy away a long time ago of with course. our phones. They know exactly where we go yeah. with our bank accounts. And, you know, just your Uber. Yeah. They can figure out exactly where you try with Uber. Or but the qu- question is, is it, is it too late to change that? It's a great question. I think about it a ton. Yeah. I remember having a conversation with Lloyd Blankfein about crypto. He said, Nova, you're a f- I love you, but you're a fool because we lost privacy. You're not getting it back. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's funny when you're you a know, ce- celebrity... You've lost your privacy a long, long time ago. You yeah, I don't care. Right, and so I don't even care. But know? it's it's weird. Like, where do we care? Well, I care um, about. Not, not your, your, I care uh, about my safety. I care about. You know, I've followed a lot of uh, these freedom fighters that have been outspoken. A lot of them are gone. A lot yeah. of them are fucking dead. Which and, is crazy. And I can't believe it. Yeah, and I can't accept the- that it was. That is the deaths that they claim to be. There's too many of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I would just say this about about right privacy. When we talk about it, there's also the aspect of privacy that they have all your data, but they can manipulate to that data. So when you think about yeah, elections, worse. what you like, what you don't, what movies are popular, right? And we talked about this, but it's yeah. that's where privacy. And data, it's relevant every second. The more you collect, like your data from 10 years ago, there's some relevance to that. Right. But your well, predilections well, change. When we grew up, even if someone wrote down all the stuff you did, 
and all that data mm-hmm. was put in files somewhere. You couldn't do anything with the fucking files. Yeah. Another 20 bucks. Uh, right? It's, 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 it's supercomputers and now AI and machine-based learning yeah. that's allowing this data. Because right. data used to not be important. Right. Right? But, and, and, and now it's wildly important. It's yeah. power. And essentially the, the use case on crypto Web3 at large is decentralized control yeah. over data. Right, that's essentially what I mean, I that example. versus Google and Meta controlling all your data, which is effectively what happens right now. I, I, because yeah, I don't know that much about the crypto. Well, b- because world. Iceland well, is such a small yeah. place, uh, three hundred thousand people. What is Iceland? Oh yeah, that everyone in the country trusts the government, so they submitted their DNA, and so there's an app. So before I kiss you, I make sure you're not my first cousin. Uh, oh my god! But but so if you trust <laughs> if you trust your government, you trust people, your cousin. <laughs> people used to trust your government. You were willing to give up your data. Now we have half the country that doesn't trust one side or the other. And so mm. I don't want to. I don't want them to have all our DNA data. Yeah, uh, nobody trusts the government now. Right. A very small yes. amount. No. Of people and so in general, why would we want the government to have? You know, they might find some disease and say, "Hey, this is going to cost so much as insurance. Yeah. Let's not give them medicine." We should all go to Davos and and go to the Rebuilding Trust Summit and see what's up. <laughs> but it's really I mean, listen, up. this, this was why trust. The, the original impetus for, for for the whole crypto decentralized movement was right. to like, how do we get this back? And yeah. It's a really complicated yeah. question. Yeah, and and it's both sides. I mean, look at you know, China. China is the worst at it, right? They they own everything oh, yeah. you do. But yeah. it's, it's creeping in all over the world. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it in, is. In, a, in a like nutshell, <clears throat> the promise of crypto is that instead of having the Apple iStore, I, the, instead of the Apple iPhone or the Google iPhone controlling every app and charging 30% on that, that there's like a decentralized platform effectively where if you're Uber, if you're Airbnb, instead of launching on something that's being controlled by a giant network where all the powers with that network, right? That it's decentralized. You can write your own app in this language with set rules that only the community can change, right? That's effectively the promise of why you would build on Ethereum versus the Apple iPhone store. So you could have a DNA database that protects your identity. And if you want to use that data for research, you can pay the person something for it, theoretically. These are really hard projects to get off the ground. But so concept- what if the grid goes down? Conceptually, well, what the if grid what? goes down, we're all screwed. If what goes down? The grid. If the grid goes down, oh, well, the, whole the grid, grid goes down, yeah. I think it's like <clears throat> seven days before, you know, the apocalypse. And then Gavin Newsom's president. <laughs> 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 Let's fucking go. <laughs> uh, and then he's gonna so, pull off his fucking mask. So, so, so and his tongue yeah. is gonna come out. Let, let's try <laughs> just kidding. So, th- just somehow, kidding. somehow, this. This transition into OnlyFans, mm. and I want to hear about that so transition. Wait, wait. Before that, <laughs> when you canceled yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Or they canceled, you canceled, you decided <clears throat> fuck them. They decided whatever. Uh, another twenty dollars. Was that? Did you see it? You spoke about being rich, poor, rich, poor. Was that? Did you see your income go and decided shit? I am poor again. Yeah. But you don't put a 20 for shit. <laughs> all right. All right. I mean, you guys owe so much money. <laughs> yeah, let's just my stop. Behalf. We'll just settle up later when we watch the reboot. We'll I mean, it's up. really yeah. ridiculous. So, yeah, was I'm that about, a moment? I'm about to lay a bunch was of them <laughs> down. I might even take my clothes <laughs> off for the OnlyFans segment. <laughs> ah, the OnlyFans. I mean, how many excited. viewers do you I'm guys have? Excited. Let's Sometimes talk about jobs. Easy. So, was the OnlyFans decision like a part of that? I'm poor again. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm going to do something outside the box at the time, right? For you. Yeah. And the most bizarre. I am living the most bizarre existence right now. Things I never, ever expected. Ever. I don't even under. We, I look at my boyfriend and we're just like, what the fuck are we doing? How okay. did that decision come? And was I, it because um, you were poor again or was it just. Yes. Okay. I was about to lose my house again. Um, in listen, I'm a single mom. I um, my dad always had money when he was alive. If any, you know, he always told me don't be an actor because it's the hardest fucking job in the world. Mm-hmm. You don't, you'll be up, you'll be down. You never know. I was never the. I turned down a lot of roles. I was never the actor that wanted a big career. I didn't care about the career. I never wanted to play a lead. I like being part of an ensemble. I like playing a supporting character. I don't need to shine. 
I don't need to be anywhere in the friggin' spotlight at all. My stomach's definitely going to start growling because I haven't eaten since this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I can hear it. Sorry. <laughs> it's just getting really distracted. <laughs> My stomach's like, shut the fuck up. Um, anyway, sorry. It's another hundred from you. Another Benji. Come on. I want Benji in the jar. In case you um, don't know. <laughs> He's a billionaire. <laughs> listen, we love... Uh, listen, we he has hundreds too. for everybody. So anyway, maybe you can pick up my mortgage. Maybe you can just pay off my house for me. <laughs> That's what happens at the end of the show. Mike pays off your mortgage. But this is the thing. I <laughs> never ask anybody for money. Like last night, we had a meeting with um, this awesome guy who wants to help us with our business and stuff. But I just can't. I can't accept it. I'm an Italian man. I'm a freaking Italian man. I've always taken care of everybody else. So... Anyhow, I took jobs as I could with my children. I would never leave my kids to go anywhere. To, I would never travel. I told my agents no, nothing. I will only go to New York. I, I, the only time I ever left L.A. to go to New York and shoot was to do Shades of Blue, and my house blows up. Mm. Wow. So That's I'm thinking crazy. I'm taking a, a gig where I'm going to have enough money to live for, you know, five years that's, that's the way I worked, so that yeah. I could just be with my children 24-7. I did not want them to ever have a nanny, because mm -hmm. I was raised by a nanny. Um, well, that came back to completely destroy my life, <laughs> as my nanny's dying, by the way. So as she's dying in my house, uh, like right after the lockdowns, um, during kind of the lockdowns, I agreed to take a forbearance during that time, because everyone's like, you should do it, you should do it. I probably didn't need to. At the time, I had enough money to get by, but it would have run out. I didn't know what was going to happen in the world. I didn't, I didn't have savings. I just always knew I'd work. I always did. I always trusted that I, you know, that the universe and God and whatever would take care of me, um, to take care of my babies. And the forbearance was a terrible idea in, in retrospect. Um, because they kept telling me that they were deferring all my, my, that I wasn't going to have to pay. Right and that I was fine, even though I was getting foreclosure letters. And then I would call and I'd say, I've got a foreclosure letter. It's nothing, don't worry about it, don't pay attention to it, you're fine. Okay, okay, this is like four times until I'm in foreclosure. Wow. And, I w and now I go to look at my statements and I am paying for, th like I don't know how many insurance companies they had me coupled with. Penalty fees. And, okay. and this but is like I'm after the house blew up. That's or New no. York. I'm sorry. Oh, that okay. was I jumped around. I'm, okay, sorry, I'm sorry. never focused. All right. Um, Shades of Blue, I took that job. I went to New York thinking I wouldn't be able to save this money now for the next God knows how many years, and that's that'll be enough for me. I don't need a lot. Like I yeah. just need enough to take care of me and these two babies. Um, the house blows up. I have to rent a townhouse now because I have a huge family. Not huge, but I take care of the old lady who I bring with me everywhere I go, who was my nanny, and she had a heart transplant. That's amazing. I always took care of her. That was my... She took care of me when nobody wanted to take mm -hmm. care of me. I lived with her for 50 years. Wow. I lived with her for 50 years. I didn't even live with my own mom for 50 years, you know? So she's dying. Fast forward now to the mandates, before the mandates. It's right after lockdown, and I'm meeting with some producers, and I'm holding her hand over here while she's dying. And they're saying to me, well, when do you think she'll die so that I can Whoa. take this job? And wow. I was like, I don't think I ever want to work with you fucking people ever again. I don't even want to be in this industry. And now I have the the um, agent in my ear continuously tell because the mandates are happening now. After I, after I couldn't do those jobs because she was dying, they're like, you have to get vaccinated to even audition for things. Or whatever. And I never even really, I don't think I've ever auditioned for any role I've ever gotten. And now I go to my family, and all my friends know, but I would never ask anybody for money. So everyone knows what's happening to me. But I'm always the person everybody else will ask for money, and I'll give it to them. I'll give them fucking everything. I don't care. Um, or I'll take everybody on a trip, or I'll buy you diamond rings, or I'll do whatever the mm -hmm. fuck it is you want mm. until my shit completely falls down. <laughs> He's like, she really needs to. <laughs> She's on a roll. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I get heated when I talk about this thing. Everyone just sort of was like, well. So I felt like I had nobody. Uh, I felt like I really had no one at All the time. people you probably helped at one point. Everyone sort of went quiet over the vaccine because it became politicized. It wasn't just like 
you know, it's like being pregnant and everyone's like, but you should get an abortion. I'm like, but I want to keep this baby. What are you talking about? I was always pro-choice. I'm still pro-choice. So are you, right? Like, do whatever the fuck you, I don't care if you're getting vaccinated. I didn't know what the implications were of the vaccine at the time. So I wasn't even, when my friends wanted to do it, I was like, do whatever you want. Like, I don't care. You want to keep your job? I feel you. Like, keep your job. Right. Um, I didn't have a job to keep. You know, I went from job to job, but I knew I couldn't try to get a job. If I had a job to keep and they kicked me out, by now I'd be in a lawsuit because now I don't give a shit. And I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm, I'm a warrior at this point. That's how I feel. Um, my daughter begged me not to lie about the, the, the um, vaccine status. I could have. A lot of people did. And um, I have a big tattoo on my arm that says no liars. She's like, Mom, I like that. And you're going to teach me to lie because you made sure that I would never lie. And I'm like, you're right. I can't teach my kids to. Right. You really hear about OnlyFans. Huh? I never knew about OnlyFans. If I would have opened that fucking account in the lockdown, I would never have to worry about money again. Wow. How does it work? So, right. I mean, con contextually, <laughs> I was just going to say contextually, right? It's. 80% correct goes to the creator and 20% only fans takes. Is that about right? Yeah. Like, and you can kind of set your business model up, like what the subscription is or what have you. You have a lot of latitude on it effectively, right? And Everything, it's a platform. It can, any, any way you want it set up. I had somebody help me um, understand it because I didn't mm -hmm. understand it at I first. I joined, I, did, I, I joined to do a podcast on there. I didn't join there to mm -hmm. do anything crazy. Right. I thought... I want to do this podcast. I don't know how to be quiet anymore. I don't want to act anymore. I feel like I need to just interview people, and I think I would be good at that, and I think I would have fun doing it. And I posted one picture, and it went viral. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, I don't know if viral is the right word, but I got a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of heat, and we had to mitigate it. So and my manager, <laughs> and the way I said that, First of all, my agent dropped me during the mandates without an email, without a text message. Crazy. I thought we were friends, too. I was like, holy shit. Um, she would probably say if she heard that, well, you weren't getting work anyway kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. maybe true. You know, people in their 50s, women in their 50s don't get a lot of work. Um, also, because I, I can't, I don't qualify for the 50-year-old role, but I also don't qualify for the younger role. It's, it gets messed up. Mm -hmm. But I always worked. It never it was never an issue for me. Anyhow, the manager starts sending all the press to me. This is during the strike. So now there's the actor strike. Right. So first it was the mandates. Then there was, I did one movie in between that came through. I think I would have still gotten that movie, even if we were still in a mandate, because mm -hmm. half the people on the movie didn't give a shit about that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> anyhow, the strike happens, and now I'm done. I know that... I, you know, I'd already been in the first foreclosure when everybody was about to shut me out. I asked for money from one person. That person would just give me a little bit of money for a lawyer. The lawyer couldn't do shit. The lawyer sucked. <laughs> um, and only, it was so crappy. My house was also flooded at the time. Mm -hmm. Wow. It was so insane, the amount of events that were happening. My nanny dying, di dies. I now have to pay for the entire funeral, get her body to New York, get her whole family there, you know, work that whole thing out. Um, the house is flooding and all the floors, the vintage, beautiful old home, all the floors are standing up. I thought I was going to have a fucking nervous breakdown. Then I had to move my mom out of her house in the Hamptons because she's about to go broke. Um, it was, and she has dementia and as a caregiver, I was like, I don't know how much is going to hit me right now. I felt so pressed. Um, the first foreclosure, all of my insurance money finally kicked in. And that sort I put the house on the market. And Compass Real Estate helped me out. Um, they gave me money to not give the house to anyone else. Mm -hmm. So that they could sell the house. Because the house is a really special house. And now I'm paying them back. So the OnlyFans started when Compass was like, we can't sell your house. The house wouldn't sell. Mm -hmm. No matter what I did, we did everything. The house wouldn't it? sell. Huh? Where was the house? 
I'm still in it, so I'm not going to oh, okay. say it. <laughs> yeah. But it's in California. But, yeah. I got it. Um, and, so, and so from there, you just were like, okay, I got to figure out a solution. The OnlyFans, yeah. And I what do you do on OnlyFans? I haven't. I mean, look, if you look at my Instagram, there's no pictures of me ever. There's no selfies. There's, no, there's none of this. There's no bikini shots. Maybe there's a random shot of me looking kind of cute, mm -hmm. kind of sexy. It's really a work platform for me and now i'm shadow banned so it doesn't even fucking matter mm -hmm. but um only fans i was like okay so i'm gonna take these selfies mm -hmm. i'm gonna do this thing all these huge celebrities are f always half naked and they're mm -hmm. my age mm -hmm. and i'm like all right let's do this so i look in my mirror in my closet and i <laughs> take a picture in my mirror my closet and i posted it on Instagram or OnlyFans? Only I posted on Instagram. Oh, okay. And I said, opened an OnlyFans page today. I was lagging on it. My wow. friends were joking. My, my, um, my boyfriend and my kids were all, and my kids' friends, my kids' best friend, my daughter's best friend was like, you should really do an OnlyFans page, Dre. I don't understand what you should do. You're just going to, yeah. it'll be quick. It'll be, you'll make the money. You'll pay Compass back. It'll be great. Mm -hmm. And, um, like I said, I was going to do a podcast on there that was going to be more about politics. And then I put that picture up and that was it. So people kept, and so on OnlyFans, you post selfies, you post pictures of you in a bikini. I'll do some professional pictures. Like tomorrow, we're going to, I'm live streaming and interviewing one of the housewives. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll go on OnlyFans. It's going to be a live stream on OnlyFans. And what, like, if I want to <laughs> watch this, what am I paying? I don't know. I don't know. It's different on hers than it is from mine. Maybe oh, fifteen see. to uh -huh. pre-save it. Fifteen bucks to pre-save it. Uh -huh. It's like watching a TV show, right? Yeah. You know. And so yeah. you you base it's, your own. Yeah, it's basically your own a platform boss. where instead but of being it, instead of being on YouTube where it's like some weird algorithm you never know how it's hitting us and right. it's just like uh, some little right for your views you get. It's basically pretty straightforward, right? It's totally. You can, it's, you're your own yeah, boss. Yeah, you're your own boss. It's a platform. You can monetize it. We could put this thing on OnlyFans if right. we wanted to. I got that, but is it, but it, yeah. is, is it? Want to be on OnlyFans, Mike? Let's no. do it, Mike. Let's <laughs> Take go. your shirt off. Take your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, wait. It's not, no, bro, but, but buddy. Is, but is it, is it, I pay one monthly subscription and I get it go on every day I want and see whatever you're posting or is it? Yes. You pay, okay. and I did, I thought the cap, I thought the highest, I didn't know anything about it when I, when I opened the page. Um, I thought it was 20 bucks was the highest you could go. So I put myself at 15. It's 50 bucks. So mm -hmm. I short, I undersold myself like I always do. <laughs> can you, can you raise it now? I feel like it would be weird. And I think that a lot of my subscribers like that, um, weren't happy because I didn't really get fully naked. Mm -hmm. But we're about to do a bunch of weird things this week. Tomorrow and the next day, we're doing a huge photo shoot. And Good I subscribe, it, Mike. I can't say where this one's going because this one is about this one's almost about ultra free. It's about my brand, so uh -huh. I'm probably I'll get naked for my brand. Let's talk Love about that. your brand. Wait, I got so, one okay. more question. All right. So you post it, it goes viral. No. Did you get? <laughs> did it turn into? Holy shit! I'm making money right away. Or oh well, the manager saw all the press and just started sending it back to me and saying, we're not dealing with this since we didn't, since we're not involved. And this has been my manager of 20 years. Wow. And I felt like, so you're telling me, you know, I'm broke. You know that I have to now go pay a publicist because am I going to call Fox news and the post and, and mm -hmm. all these publications that want a soundbite about why I would do such a fucking psycho thing. Um, and you know I'm going to get a lot of heat. and People are going to bash me in the media. And I got destroyed. Um, I felt like that was really, uh, really shows you what people are made of mm -hmm. in this industry. And it, it bummed me out. I love my manager. Yeah. But that didn't sit well with me. Is he still, back being he's your still manager? my manager. And he keeps bouncing that press back to me. And I keep having to hire somebody to help me. And but the only fans... At least he doesn't get his his cut of your OnlyFans. But there wasn't even a big cut to get. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it wasn't. I was like, you know, you try to find something that's gonna that's gonna fit me better. Like maybe right. I should be. You should look and be looking for hosting jobs or podcasts that I could do mm -hmm. while I can't be, you know, a compliant actor within the industry. Um, it, it it was a bummer for me. Yeah. It, it was definitely a bummer. Do you interact? 
with your fan base there? So now you got a yes. fan base and you interact because they send in questions or. Yeah. If you live stream there, <coughs> I'll answer fan questions. And, and for the most part, they're pretty respectful. Mm -hmm. you DM them and stuff. Right. You, s you sell your own pictures yeah. to them, personal yep. pictures, whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically like a platform you can monetize right, yeah. for your content. Imagine, imagine. Like, yeah. It's that know, simple, look, right? I wouldn't be doing I don't it do if I didn't have it. And things. you know what? When you say you wouldn't be doing it, it's only because it has the reputation or the lean towards porn, right? I'm saying like, oh, but there's a lot. A there's a hundred percent. If my daughter that's said she was going to do it, I'd be like, you're out of your fucking mind. You're at the beginning but, of your life. I'm at the end of my but, life. But do you no, think you're, halfway, you're halfway. But do you think there's a like a use case for it that's more just about democratizing content and information, right? Instead of, again, instead of having YouTube control it under some algorithm nobody can figure out. Well, is, that's is why I started a, originally. I thought I was going to do a podcast on there. Uh -huh. They have OFTV. It just doesn't have enough reach for that right now. Is that what you're saying? Like their user base is it's too plugged big, in. Huh? It's pretty big. So how come you can't do just a podcast and monetize that there? I can. We're going to do an OFTV thing, which is not, there's no money. Uh -huh. but that's just basically advertising how's, on the How's platform. OFTV work? That you can do long form content, I think, and it just goes up and uh -huh. it can be edited. Live streaming, which a lot of the creators do, is just yeah. you're a fly on the wall watching these girls just do what they're doing for how, the day. How do people God only knows what a lot of the girls are doing. Mine are pretty, you know, they're you be, you're being normal. Silly yeah. yeah. I'm so just did you make, yeah. Did you make money? enough to pay off your mortgage and if after that i will never pay that around. mortgage down no um oh did you make money I, oh yeah I'd, we made enough money with the surge when it first started yeah to get me out of trouble wow so we're okay right now and, that, and now we're using the money for ultra free mm -hmm. because i won't ask anybody for money i like that yeah. so let's talk about ultra yeah, free let's talk about ultra yeah. free. chapter four where was the inspiration from how did what you is come Ultra up Free? with it? Some people yeah. haven't heard about it yet. Sure. Okay, Ultra Free is brand new. It's just it's launching this week. So um, my boyfriend Robbie Stabler, who's the only person who stood by me through Shout, Shout out to Robbie. Robbie. It's my baby right there. Um, man, we've been through hell. We really thought that our bank accounts were going to be tapped. Not that there was anything left to take, but you know, just watching even Trudeau do and his you know beautiful things in Canada over there. During that whole time, we just felt like there's just no freedom. There's just no freedom. Freedom's like a four-letter word. Mm -hmm, you mention mm -hmm. it on your social platform, you're you're gonna be shadow banned. Yeah. You gotta join wow. the Bitcoin community. We're all about freedom. We're gonna talk to you about that. Um, yeah. uh, I would love to. I'd love to know more about it because this is the next chapter. That we intend to keep the money this time and not to give it away to all our friends that don't mm -hmm. really give a fuck about us. <laughs> Um, so ultra free. So ultra free. Robbie's the the um, he's the creative director and the drummer of a band called All Them Witches. Their fans love them. They really love what he does in the band with his merch, the mm -hmm. merchandising. Um, the band, even when they were off the road for all those years, were during the lockdowns. He found a way to keep them relevant through making merch and, you know, all handmade stuff that he would do with, with bleach and colors and all this stuff. So anyway, he's the artist. He's does all the videos for ultra free. We're now going to do that for ourselves. So he'll, you know, he still has his band and everything and does all that stuff. And, but for us in ultra free, it is about freedom of speech. It is about not being censored. It is about, getting back to a time where freedom was cool. We mm -hmm. want to make freedom cool again. Mm -hmm. Now when you talk about freedom, you're like some right-wing supremacist lunatic. Like that mm -hmm. was never the case. Like right. freedom was was always associated with like unity and a, and I don't know, yeah. man. Hippies I feel and, like yeah, everything but the far left and the far right has kind of screwed up the dialogue and they've tried to hijack both sides. I do think though, and I'm not far right. Yeah. Even though they have a lot of social issues that I'm not down with, but um I feel like there was more freedom over there right mm -hmm. now. Oh, unless you want to get an abortion. Yeah. Mike, yes, all right, we're not gonna but I also, I can get, I mean, I'll fucking you, you, can't say, you can't say the far right's got more I, social issues. I, when, when no, I, I agree I, with you. I, my I, daughter and I, both sides. You, 
A hundred percent. But my daughter she's and I. She's entitled to her opinion. So she's a, like I'm a liberal, like, liberal kid. But I'm entitled to fire back. <laughs> yes, you are. Fuck that. Don't worry. Can, don't I'm polite. not worrying You're, about it. I'm I just like saying, being like, able it's just to like go back and forth. you can have an opinion that the other. far right is where freedom exists right now, or not the far right, that the right more freedom exists than the left. That's a valid opinion. I said Look, there are abortions. You may, you may not agree with it. I mean, again, if you want to have an abortion, it absolutely doesn't exist. Well, on the other, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. No, I'm with you. Fifty-eight thousand rape victims in the last twelve <sighs> months have been forced to deliver babies that they didn't want. Fifty-eight thousand. That, they don't think it's free. That's a lot. I don't know that yeah, statistic. I don't know the statistic that's intense. Either. Yeah. No, but anyway, you're saying. Go, go, you were saying. I love when yeah. men talk about abortion. It's yeah. my favorite. I love it. Keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm freedom. But I'm about me freedom. too. Me too. A hundred percent. So yeah, I don't agree with a lot of the social issues. I, I agree. My daughter always goes, "You're socially liberal and you're you're fiscally Republican." I'm like, "Okay, whatever that means." I would just say I'm probably a libertarian, yeah. or I'm nothing. You know, like, I just don't give a shit. Like, everybody just leave everybody alone and have fun. So ultra free is is that. Like, mm -hmm. anybody who feels caged by any circumstance, whether it's abortion or, you know, someone who might have a mental um, disorder or, or a physical disorder, anybody who feels caged in by mm -hmm. anything should have the fucking right to feel ultra free. And everybody's been so fucking ultra lately. Mm -hmm. Everyone's so ultra in their beliefs and their this. Why don't you stop being ultra this and ultra that and just be ultra free mm -hmm. and stop judging your neighbor and your friend and your this and your that and let everybody do their own thing. Yeah. So, but we also poke a lot of fun at it. So if you look at our Instagram, which is ultra free with two A's because he's so ultra. Um, and that's our Twitter too. Instagram is, we just launched it, so there's no. We're not going to probably get any followers because, because hmm. nobody. I don't exist on Instagram now. I'm shadow mm -hmm. banned, so you can't really find me or the wow. brand, because you're talking about freedom and you're talking about freedom of speech. Yeah, and it doesn't exist. Right, and it, it really doesn't exist though, on the left, and we know that. You go to Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, but then you, you're all. I don't know how to. I don't know how to wrap my head around that platform. And you can get shadow banned from Twitter. Yeah, you can. Yeah, tons of people get shadow banned from Twitter. I, I agree. But it's centralization but, but, but right of control. The, 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 the Twitter certainly has a freedom DNA. I know. Yeah, but, I don't but, trust but, anybody. I, mean, I, get, no, I, I right read it all day long because that's where yeah. crypto. What you do? I don't. I don't so, know where the. I still. The jury's still out. I don't and, know yet what that story is. And what's I want to see that story unfold. What's the product? I love the What's, name, by the way. Yeah, Ultra Free? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fire. What's the He's, product? The product is streetwear. My son is obsessed with streetwear. You know, all these brands like like Spider, and I don't even know what half of this stuff is, really, mm -hmm. but I'm always buying it for my, mm -hmm. for my kid. And, and Robbie's art, it really, he's like, a, he's like this psychedelic cartoonist and all kinds of weird stuff. It almost looks like, it, you know... Of course, his band's called All Them Witches, so a lot of mm -hmm. the imagery is is kind of witchy. Mm -hmm. But you know, we're 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 Christians, but we're not like psychos. Like, oh my god, yeah. you know, we're just our in the background. That this is our belief, but no, I don't really care yeah. what anybody else believes as long yeah. as you're not an evil motherfucker. Yeah. Well, you Mel know. does a lot of merch, right? Yeah, you know, talk about with for, Robbie. For ever heard of City Morgue? City yeah, I'm not sure. is it, I like it's the sound like of a, that. So tell, Trap tell metal rock band. Ooh. They sell a shit ton of merch and sell out a ton of shows. They're, oh, it's a band. Yeah, it's yeah. a band. Similar concept. City and he does, he does two, two right. the merch guys. for them. One is uh, merch. I mean, one is Brazilian, one is Italian. They blew up, sold out Madison Square Garden, ton oh, of arenas. Wow. They do millions of dollars in merch in a year. Yeah. But it's really about like almost like a statement in its yeah. own regard. They, That's they how, how they the genre operate. Of music that, yeah, just yeah, and what, yeah. Their, what their vibe Ultra is. Ultra freedom. Like, yeah. That's what it is. Said man. fuck the man. Yes. Yeah. And that's why I'm on OnlyFans trying to make the money instead of borrowing oh. money or. And is it launching this week or it launched? Yes. Right now, just the, uh, it's all going to be limited run. There'll be, eventually, we'll have some stuff that's. It's always there. We're making mm -hmm. the stuff at home. I mean, wow. literally. So it's, um, and we have people, you know, we have our, our people, we have our crew, but um, it's ultrafree.co with one A. It's all, okay. the, the handles on socials are ultra with two A's. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's ultrafree.co on the Google mm -hmm. if they let you find it. So I don't, I don't know. know if you notice, 
you are an entrepreneur, like to the max. Every step <laughs> of it, you have done it and Thanks, found guys. a way I've done to it go and above way. and beyond and make yeah. it work. And that's what an entrepreneur is. I didn't want to. That's what the show is about. <laughs> like me, I've been kicked out of every school since the seventh grade. In the tenth grade, I just decided I'm not going back. Right? <laughs> so I didn't go back. I was kicked out, kind of what, whichever way you want to. He went to Princeton. Oh, you fancy motherfucker. Yeah. He went to Columbia. Uh -huh. He was born rich. He wasn't. <laughs> it starts like a joke. A black guy, a Jewish guy, and a white guy Walk walks into, into a, a room. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> and created a business untitled, right? So you are an entrepreneur to the fullest extent. Every time you fell down, you sat there and you figured out a way to figure some new shit out. Now you're going into Ultra Free, which that name is dope as shit. Oh, I'm glad name. you guys yeah. like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I really like that name. You're an entrepreneur because yeah. he's got the... Yeah, and me, you know, kicked out of every single school since the seventh grade. I'm a high school dropout. All right, let's keep bragging about For that. you. But I, I'm just <laughs> saying. This guy it, just hustled. It's hustle. Just shot. hustle. Yeah, it's a hustle. Shot I own a bunch of rest. I've been yeah. shot. Own a bunch of restaurants shot, now, yeah. became a music executive, own my own label, own some real estate now. Like, it's it's the grind. It's the yeah, hustle. Yeah, you want to take Ultra Free to the tippity top? Let's <laughs> fucking go. So I'm saying <laughs> you are an entrepreneur. So I have two, fu three fun questions for you. Mm -hmm. First question. If you had a superpower, I mean like Marvel superpower, what would it be? Man, it would be... Like the, I'd be like be like the Avengers, man. I want to smoke out the bad guys. Which, but what, what would be a power you use to smoke out the bad guys? Mike's superpower is he's bald. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I come from a place of total fucking love. I want people. I want the bad guys, the guys that are behind the black curtain. I want them to. Oh, if I could make people recognize the error of their ways and try to redeem themselves and come back from it, that would be my superpower. So it just go like this. Yes. Love. And it'd be love. Yeah, just, and I'm not trying to be like all, yeah, yeah. man. Nah, I love like, that. I really wish that people could just turn it around and forgive themselves and forgive each other. Yeah. What was your most splurge expensive purchase when you made money for the first real money for the first time not a house like something fun i never bought myself anything really that's true i love that um i bought my i chipped in to buy my dad a cartier tank watch maybe that was a big one um man that's a hard question <laughs> i mean that's a hard question. I don't, I don't know. I don't. I can't. Maybe the house. My dad helped me with the house, but now the house is a noose around my neck. Um, Spend I bought all my girls their little pinky rings that they wanted. I like the pinky mm -hmm. ring. That's pretty. Thanks. Yeah, I like the pinky but ring. But my girl, uh, who gave me this? Oh no, that I bought this one. Samantha Ronson. She gave my daughter one when she was born. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I really buy myself anything. Uh, to every girl that's listening or guy that is amazed by your story like I am, like we all are, and you had to give them an ounce of gold of just what it is to be an entrepreneur, what it is like to be life resilient. Lesson. Life lesson. A your life, one lesson. life lesson. Like your, what your would it piece be? of wisdom you're leaving Your piece with. of wisdom. Oh, dude, these are hard questions for someone. This, 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 like this is the, the final moment. question. We boil it down <laughs> to this one question, which is going to live on forever. Yeah. And Can I? Yeah, give it, give yeah. it. All right. yeah. yeah, all right, hold on. Uh -oh. Because usually we always we get this together, but like, here's an actual ounce of gold. Oh, I love these. I have a few of these. Oh, you uh, got the Canadian maples. <laughs> that's what I do, buddy. <laughs> so that's, so that's your ounce, ounce of gold to keep with you. And Mike, and was you that leave worth the now? ounce of gold. And unfortunately, it's worth a little less than it was last week, two thousand and ten dollars. I think we should oh, stop it's asking up. him what it's but worth. It's go it up. Jinxes no, no, it every week. It goes up week. a little higher down. It's heading back up. Yeah. So, so we asked this like, what's your ounce of wisdom in effect? I mean, I hate to say this. No, say it. It's so crass. Don't be a pussy. 
Don't be a love pussy. It. I Just love it. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Another hundred in the jar. <laughs> no, I mean it because you know what? You're gonna you're you're gonna have those moments where it's just so dark, man. Yeah. And you know, if it weren't for my kids, I, I mean, I would tell every woman that can start a family. Because having those babies, man, that's the most that's the biggest inspiration I have ever had. And if you don't, if you can't start a family, hang around some young people. No, uh, Michael says that. Well, yeah. that's two ounces of gold. I love that. That's a lot of ounces of gold. I think there's a lot of ounces of gold. And I think you're super brave for all that stuff you went through for real. And it's um, amazing because you were just doing the right thing, following your heart this whole time. And it's just a fucked up world out there. And I don't really curse, but I'll even put $20 into that because <laughs> um, I think that story was really inspiring. It's like amazing oh, to have you. That. Thank you so much for and I think coming when by you and getting like to know us. Permission. Uh -huh. <laughs> that, you're, it's fine. I'm and not I think when you, you. Yeah. I think when you listen back to this, you're going to realize how much of an entrepreneur you are. I and mean, how resilient Gangster you Goddess, are. we were really trying to push our brand, Gangster Goddess, and we just kept getting fucked over by so many sleazy men. But that's the story of being insane. an entrepreneur. You fail nine out of the ten times, and one time you just hit it, and you yeah. hit it again. And Ultra again. free. Ultra free. Ultra, Ultra free. free. Shout yeah. out. Ultra free. Shout out. Dre, yeah. thanks so much. Thanks Thank for you having so me, much. guys. This was yeah. dope. Thank you. Aww. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.